these shots have in common? Think about that, and we're going to address it in this lesson. Hello, I'm Master Instructor Anthony Beeler, and in this week's video, we're going to address the subject, Aiming Secrets the Pros Don't Want You to Know. More specifically, we're also going to address why aiming systems just don't work sometimes. So let's go to the table and find out why. Roughly 20 years ago, I was playing at Shannon Dalton's All-Star Billiards Tournament in Somerset, Kentucky, and I arrived at the event early, and uh, I watched Charlie Bryant playing Shannon Dalton some One Pocket. And uh, after they finished their match, I noticed that Charlie Bryant set up a shot like this, and he would shoot it over and over and over again. And uh, maybe you've had this shot, maybe you've shot it several times, and maybe you've had varying results. So for example, uh, you might come down and shoot it at a softer speed. And you'll note that the ball struck the rail over in here. You might set the same shot up again. And this time, you might strike it with a little bit harder speed and the ball goes down a little bit further. And then you might set the shot up again at the exact same spot and strike it with an even harder speed and split the pocket. There's been several times over the years where I've seen players set up the same shot over and over and over again, hit the ball in the same spot, but sometimes they make it and sometimes they don't. As I was shooting that shot, you might have noticed that the harder that I struck it, the more that the ball cut. The slower that you strike shots, the more that friction-induced throw takes over. So the thinner that you have to cut a ball, you don't necessarily want to shoot that shot soft. And if you have to shoot it soft, then you're gonna have to make an adjustment for that because friction-induced throw is real and friction-induced throw affects your aim. So aiming secret number one is this. A repeatable stroke struck at a repeatable speed gets repeatable aiming results. With that being said, roughly 75% of all shots that are struck by professional pool players fall into the same speed range. And the reason that they all fall into the same speed range is because that pro players understand what I just showed you. The slower that you strike balls, the more that friction-induced throw takes over and causes the shot to go offline. If you need to shoot a really thin cut shot, then you're going to need to strike that ball with some speed. But for 75% of the shots that you'll shoot, you want to shoot it with a nice medium speed. And what professional players do is they don't control their cue ball with speed, they control their cue ball with tip position. And so you might be asking the question, what speed do pro players shoot 75% of their shots? And to put it simply, if the cue ball 
is at the line here. The cue ball goes all the way up, all the way back, and then back to the spot where it started from. That is what pro players would consider to be the optimal speed to shoot most of their shots. Now they may shoot it a little bit harder, but generally they will never shoot it softer. So let's see what it looks like. Again, the optimal speed is all the way up the table, all the way back, and then back to the point where you started from. And uh, you wanna at least get back to where you started from. It's okay, I would say, to come all the way back to where you started from and even go all the way up to the side pocket. But 75% of the shots that you shoot should be struck at this speed. And that's what's gonna get you the best results. Because as I said before, a consistent stroke at a consistent speed is gonna deliver consistent aiming results. And no matter what aiming system that you use, if it puts you on the correct shot line and you shoot that shot with the incorrect speed, then most likely that shot won't go. So as a player, I would be setting up the cue ball at this position here, sending it all the way up the table, all the way back down, and try to get it as close as I could to the point of where that I started from. I'm gonna to refer to this as the optimal stroke speed. So practice this over and over, and it's gonna make your aiming much more reliable as you shoot shots. The next secret that I want you to think about is an aiming system is only as good as the angle of the shot, the speed of the shot, and the spin on the cue ball. And so what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna take an in-depth look at each of these varying factors and show how it can affect your aim. First thing that I want you to consider when you go to pocket a ball is the angle of the shot. And it's important to note that, you know, we, we've discussed friction induced throw and how speed affects it. But another thing you really need to consider is the fact that half ball hits tend to throw more than any other cut angle. So if you're up here and you've got roughly a half ball hit here, if you strike that half ball hit softly, then look what happens. I'm gonna undercut that shot. So those shots tend to be affected by friction induced throw more than any other cut angle. So that's another secret, so be aware of that. Another thing is, if you have a half ball hit, you really don't want to baby it. You know, you'd be better off hitting it with that full length table speed that we referred to earlier, and that's gonna get you more reliable results. So angle and speed are both contributing factors to a player's aim. Spin is also a contributing factor. And uh, I've watched numerous AccuStats videos over the years where that uh, Bill M. Cardona and Buddy Hall would be commentating a match and I would hear it over and over and over again, Buddy Hall would repeatedly say, on thin cut shots, I hit that with a high cue ball. And he said, 
he's better able to judge the thinness of the hit when the Q-tip is at the top of the cue ball. Now that tells me two things. Number one, Buddy Hall probably aimed with the edge of his shaft. Why else would you want the shaft up at the top of the cue ball to side into that object ball there? He's using his shaft as a reference. But the second reason why that Buddy wants his Q-tip at the top of the cue ball is when you strike a shot and that shot is a sliding cue ball, then friction-induced throw is a more prevalent factor. And so two things you need to remember. If you've got a, a really thin cut shot, friction-induced throw is not your friend. Even if you aim it correctly, if you strike it at a super slow speed and you slide the cue ball up there, friction-induced throw is going to affect your ability to pocket balls. And you may be lined up correctly, but you might miss the shot because of one of these factors. So whenever you come up to shoot a thin shot, a high ball gives you a much better line of aim as you go to pocket that ball. So to reiterate, aiming secret two is that aiming systems are only good as the angle, speed, and spin of the shot that you shoot. And again, if you've got a half ball hit, throw is gonna become a more prevalent factor. If you are shooting a shot with a slower speed, throw is gonna become a more prevalent factor. If you're shooting the ball below center or you're hitting it with a center cue ball and the cue ball is sliding up into the object ball, then throw is gonna become a more prevalent factor. So these are all things that you have to consider when you go to pocket a ball. Another thing that I want you to consider is stroke length. As I said before, a repeatable stroke struck at a repeatable speed usually gives repeatable results. And so if you're trying to achieve the same stroke speed over and over and over again, you're going to want to put a repeatable stroke on the shots that you shoot. And so the best thing that we can do for that is use a repeatable stroke length. And so if I go to shoot this five ball, I'll take a couple of practice strokes and I'm gonna to come to my set. One, two, three. My stroke length is when I pull back to the bottom of my ferrule. I'm wanting to put that same stroke length at that same stroke speed the majority of the time. So again, what we're trying to get at is we're wanting to shoot roughly 75% of our shots with the same stroke length and the same speed and we should get repeatable results from there. So again, here's what it looks like. Practice strokes, one, two, three. Pull back to the bottom of the ferrule. One, two, one, two, three, four. And you'll note that I shot that shot at roughly a table length speed. And that's true and correct. I'm wanting to shoot nearly all of my shots at that table length speed so I can get reliable results. The truth of the matter is that aiming systems are great for reference, but all of these other factors play a role. 
a repeatable stroke struck at a repeatable speed lends repeatable results for your aim. In contrast, aiming systems are only as good as the angle of the shot, the speed of the shot, and the spin of the shot. When you start varying these elements, then your aiming system can be affected. It's not necessarily the fact that you've implemented the aiming system wrong, your aim could be dead on. But one of these factors, one of these other factors could be what's affecting your aim. And I see students over and over again, and they come to me and they say, this aiming system isn't working. Well, do they have stroke flaws? Are they coming straight through the ball? Maybe they are, maybe they're not. Do they have a repeatable stroke length? Are they shooting shots at a repeatable speed? Is the shot that they missed at a cut angle, like the half ball hit, that's more prevalent to throw. All these factors play a role, and you have to be aware of them when you go to pocket balls. And you know, uh, as a player, you've got to consider all these different things because striking a shot that's too soft at the wrong angle will cause you to miss. And uh, if you want repeatable results, then you have to follow repeatable procedures. Repeatable speed, repeatable spin, and with a repeatable stroke gives repeatable results. Aiming systems are very memory oriented. And so if I'm using the edge of the shaft system to pocket balls, then if I shoot all of my shots at a particular speed, then when I go to shoot a cut shot to the corner, like the one I demonstrated earlier, if I shoot it at a consistent speed, I will automatically learn to adjust my aim to pocket that ball. However, if you're using another system and you line up for that shot and it appears to be dead, but you hit it with the wrong speed and the wrong spin, then you may end up a diamond short on the shot, scratching your head, wondering why that you missed the shot. So all of these things play a role. Well, I certainly hope that this lesson has improved your pool game. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And uh, if you have questions or comments, leave them in the section below. Thanks again, guys. It's just one of those amazing classes that uh, you can never forget. It's one of those classes that can really get you going where you want to go with the game. It's the best online course on pool out there. It's been really cool working with Anthony from home. I've already learned so much. I love the course, it's easy to use, and available 24-7, which fits well with my busy schedule. Luckily, I stumbled upon Anthony Bueller's online courses, so I signed up, and within three or four months, my game had improved dramatically. It will definitely improve your game. When I did go back to the regional tournament, Finally, after seven years, I got first place. They bumped me up to the next division. I went back the following year. I got first place in that division, the first year. I can't say highly enough how much Anthony's courses have helped me, and I have no doubt they will help you too.
If you do have any questions, he's available on the phone calls. He answers your questions very quickly. Uh, someone asked me about Anthony Miller's virtual beer academy class. Go all the way. <laughs>